Hey everybody, um, I thought I'd do a little video on um, I thought I'd do a little video on equatorial mounts. Um, this is my first ever telescope that we purchased. Um, it's a Newtonian reflector and this is an equatorial mount. Um, and it's pretty good, it's not too bad for a second hand telescope and it's nice and cheap, which is great. So what I want to do is go through all the individual bits on the equatorial mount and um, to kind of explain how you balance it and how you use an EQ mount. So I know that in this garden, north is roughly in that direction. So on an equatorial mount, this axis here has to point to the north. So I'm going to spin it round so that it points to the north, which is roughly, roughly that way in this garden. This particular mount, uh, it's about an EQ3. Uh, it's reasonably, reasonably stable. Um, so as you look at different mounts, EQ1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on, the higher the number, the more stable the mount is. So for this particular telescope, this, is, um, this one has a mirror which is 114 millimeters and it's a 900 millimeter focal length in total to the focal point. Uh, it's great for observation, really good. It's not so good for um, photography because you can't achieve prime focus where the sensor on the camera is at exactly the focal point because the actual focal point is exactly here and it needs to be a bit further out for a camera. So um, let's go through balancing the scope now. Uh, I'm going to balance the scope as if it was set up for visual. So what I need is an eyepiece. So I'll grab one of those. Here we go. So we have a 25 millimeter eyepiece and I'll pop that in here. There you go. Now the reason why that's important is because you have to have all the weight that's going on this telescope actually on there already. There's no point in balancing it unless you've got all the weight on there as well already. So let's give it a go. Let's see if we can balance this telescope. So on an EQ mount like this, you have some clutches. There are two clutches. One is here, which is for the right ascension axis. And then you have another one here, which is for the declination axis here. Okay, so what we need to do is make sure that the scope is reasonably well balanced. Um, and the way to do that is to make it horizontal. First of all, I need to remove one of these slow motion controls. So I can just take that off so it's not in the way. And then I need to put the scope so that it's as horizontal as I can get it. Now, ideally you want to use a spirit level to make sure it's horizontal. So there we go. The scope is horizontal. I've just logged it off again. What we're trying to do is balance this axis at the moment. So you can see if I was to loosen this and slide it along a bit, it's going to be heavy to one side. So we want to try and get it roughly, we want to try and get it roughly balanced so that it stays where you want it to go. And when that's when that's nicely balanced, you just gently tighten these up. They don't have to be super tight. They just need to be finger tight so that the scope won't move. So that's great. Now what we need to do is lock off the scope. And we're trying to now balance between the counterweights and the scope itself here. So we'll unlock this one and we see if the scope is balanced. That's not too bad actually, but to demonstrate it being unbalanced, I'm going to move one of these weights further down. And you can see that's not balanced because it, the weights are pulling it round. And what we're trying to get is the scope to stay where we put it. So if I reposition those, I think they're roughly around here.
slightly scope heavy still. That's pretty good. And the idea is if you unlock everything on the scope and put it in any position, it should stay there. That's not bad at all. So I'd say that's pretty much balanced. So that if, when it's rotating, it should stay exactly where you left it. That's pretty good. Okay, so now that that's balanced, I'm going to put my slow motion control back on. There we go. Okay, now this, this particular mount, uh, I'm just going to rotate it round. I'm really lucky with this one because I've been able to get a right ascension motor. And when this is plugged in with this little battery box here, it's, and switch it to north, because I'm in the northern hemisphere here, um, it will automatically cause the right ascension to compensate for the Earth's rotation. That's really useful for tracking objects, particularly the moon. As the Earth rotates, they drift out of the scope's uh, view. But because, because this isn't a super accurate EQ mount, um, it's, uh, it only does it roughly, it's not exact. But it's good enough for imaging things like the planets. So if we were to align this, let's say Polaris, which is normally over there, we would like this axis to be as in line with Polaris as we can get it. And we simply do that by, you can look through the scope, having it roughly in this position, or you can just do it by eye. Um, this particular scope doesn't have a polar finder going through the center. Some of the other uh, mounts do have a polar scope and you can literally look through a little telescope that's built in the middle and it shows you where the constellations of the Plough, um, Passa Versa Major and uh, Cassiopeia are and you align your scope in accordance to where Polaris star is and you see that through the polar scope as you look through. Um, but with this scope you can't actually do it that accurately so you can only if you know it's roughly there, you just roughly position it as best you can. Um, the controls on here, you've got two of them. This is the slow motion control for the right ascension, and this is the declination. So if I wanted to go to a particular object, and I knew, let's say, the moon was over there, I would unlock the two clutches. You then position your scope where you want it to go, lock it off as best you can, and you can have a finder scope on here. Uh, this one does have a finder scope. This is the little red dot finder. So ideally, that would be on there and it would be in line so that it was lined up with what the scope is seeing. Um, so you could look through there and see a little red dot and that would be in line, hopefully, with the scope. Now, the way to align these up is to get your telescope looking at um, a distant object like a tree. So I know that there's a chimney pot over there. So if I was to look through the scope, there we go. So I'm actually, funnily enough, on the distant flower pot, a distant uh, chimney pot over there, and then look through this scope. Now I can see that this is not in line with that. So what I then have to do is line this up by adjusting these controls. And it needs to move down a bit. There we go. So I can see the chimney pot there and when I look in here, I can see the chimney pot as well. So the idea is that whatever the finder scope is looking at, the telescope is looking at. But to line them up, you have to set up the telescope first and then line the finder scope to the telescope. So let's say that was the moon and it's obviously moving. On this telescope, I could then lock on the right ascension motor and that would roughly track because I've aligned this axis to the North Star, and this is now looking at the Moon. So you don't actually rotate this at all, that stays in the same axis. What you do is you use your clutches to go very roughly to where you want to go, and then you use your slow motion controls to find tweak where you want it to go. And once you've got the object in the uh, eyepiece and in the finder scope, you put on your right ascension motor and that will then track the object for you. 
another point to note is the degrees on the side here um, and a lot of people wonder where do you set this to uh, what you can do is use a mobile phone app to find out your latitude and I know mine is about 52 ish 51 52 so you would adjust this so that it is at 52 so I would just quickly adjust that to around 52 and then lock it off however in reality uh, you probably will adjust it when you're in position slightly because it's really hard to know that you've got this absolutely accurate so there you go that was a just a very quick video on um, EQ mounts uh, this is a fairly typical starter telescope uh, it was I think it was 80 pounds when I picked it up it's very good as a starter telescope it's got a four inch mirror in it and um, it's got a really good long focal length so it's great for the moon it's really good for planets. Um, you can see Saturn's rings quite comfortably through a scope like this. And um, they're everywhere. You could get them on eBay and um, secondhand, Facebook marketplace, those kind of things. And I would expect to pay new for something like this. They go for quite a lot. They're sort of 150 pounds upwards. Secondhand between 60 and 100 pounds for one in good condition. Uh, you will find that um, the eyepieces that come with these scopes will be okay to get you started but they're probably the first thing you'll want to change so the eyepieces are the bit that does all of the magnification and therefore you probably want to get better ones of those at some point fairly soon you can pay quite a lot of money for them a typical good eyepiece will be around about 50 to 80 pounds they're worth their weight they're absolutely brilliant to get good quality eyepieces so you can see the good sizes a 25 millimeter one will be a lovely wide field of view really good for finding objects and then a 15 millimeter slightly more zoomed in a bit more magnification and then a two times Barlow lens for each of those so you get four different magnifications and um, that would do really well and I tend to use a 25 for finding objects and a 15 for looking in more detail and a Barlow lens the other thing that this scope is really good at is using um, a mobile phone on a mount and um, you can get some brilliant images through taking videos of things like the moon and the planets and um, then stacking those videos and producing a much higher quality image so it's well worth doing getting a good quality mobile phone mount just to go on there and then you don't have to pay for any expensive cameras at this point I hope that's helpful if you did like this video please give me a big thumbs up really appreciate it and um, uh, share it if you can and of course like and subscribe if you can so yeah there you go equatorial mount take care